out thy desperate hand. Art thou a man? Thy form cries out, thou art. Thy tears are womanish. Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast. Unseemly woman in a seeming man, or ill-beseeming beast in seeming both. Thou hast amazed me. By my holy order, I thought thy disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt? Wilt thou slay thyself? And slay thy lady that in thy life lives by doing damned hate upon thyself? Why wailst thou on thy birth, the heaven and earth since birth, and heaven and earth, all three do meet in thee at once, which thou at once wouldst lose? Fie, fie, thou shamest thy shape, thy love, thy wit, which like a usurer, abounds in all, and uses none in that true use indeed which should bedeck thy shape, thy love, thy wit. Thy noble shape is but a form of wax, digressing from the valor of a man. Thy dear love sworn but hollow perjury, killing that love which thou hast vowed to cherish, thy wit, that ornament to shape and love, Misshapen in the conduct of them both. Like powder in a skillless soldier's flask is set afire by thine own ignorance, and thou dismembered by thine own defense. What rouse thee, man? Thy Juliet is alive, for whose dear sake thou wast but lately dead. There art thou happy. Tybalt would kill thee. But thou slewest Tybalt, there art thou happy. The law which threatened death becomes thy friend and turns it to exile, there art thou happy. A pack of blessings lights upon thy back. Happiness courts thee in her best array. But like a misbehaved and sullen wench, thou poutst upon thy fortune and thy love. Take heed, take heed. Such die miserable. Go, get thee to thy love, as was decreed. Ascend her chamber hence, and comfort her. But look thou stay not till the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live, till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty hundred thousand times more joy than thou went forth in lamentations. Then I confess, here on my knees before high heaven and you, that before you and next unto high heaven, I love your son. My friends were poor but honest, so is my love. Be not offended, it hurts not him that he is loved of me. I follow him not by any token of presumptuous suit, nor would I have him till I do deserve him, yet never know what that desert may be. I know I love in vain, strive against hope, yet in this captious and intenable sieve I still pour in the waters of my love, and lack not to lose still. Thus Indian-like, religious in mine air, I adore the sun that looks on his worshipper but knows of him no more. My dearest madam, let not your hate encounter with my love for loving where you do, but if yourself, whose aged honor cites a virtuous youth, did ever in so true a flame of liking wish chastely and love dearly that her Diane was both itself and love, oh then, take pity on one whose state is such that cannot choose, but lend and give where she is sure to lose but seeks not to find that her search implies, but riddle-like lives sweetly where she dies. Well, you do look, my son, in a moved sort, as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our revels now are ended. These, our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air. 
into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. Sir, I am vexed. Bear with me my weakness. My brain is troubled. Be not disturbed with my infirmity. If you be pleased, retire into my cell, and there repose a turn or two. I'll walk to still my beating mind. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind? A false creation proceeding from the heat-oppressed brain. I see thee yet in form as palpable as this which I now draw, that marshalst me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Oh, mine eyes are made the fools of other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dudgeon gouts of blood, which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now over, the one half world nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings and withered murder. Alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf, whose howl his watch, thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarqueen's ravishing strides, towards his design, moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm-set earth, hear not my steps, which way they walk, for fear thy very stones prate of my whereabouts and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. Whilst I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds to cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is Nell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.